All right, people, this is going to be kind of a long one. Um, after reading this, it kind of, it, it was a, kind of like a sob story with the, how small the dog is, but I'm going to switch it up after reading this. I'm going to switch it up to uh, another person that um, just the letter that she wrote to Denver just it absolutely floored me. And um, so I'm going to read both sides of the story, all right? So, try to keep up. Uh, Dachshund faces dangerous dog death sentence. A miniature sausage dog is facing a possible death sentence after nipping a na neighbor's ankle. At 8 inches in height, Lucy the Dachshund doesn't look the most fearsome of creatures, but she faces being destroyed under the Dangerous Dog Act if owner Melanie Hobson is convicted of allowing her to run amok. Melanie of two, or mother of two, Melanie appeared at Newcastle Court last week where she pleaded not guilty to having a dangerous dog out of control in a public place. Melanie, who faces a fine and the prospect of Lucy being destroyed if found guilty, is, has now spoken out in defense of her dog. 25-year-old uh, mom, um, she said, I've never been to court before and I found it very intimidating. I can't believe this is happening. Lucy is a lovely dog and would never, I would never have her around my kids if I thought she was dangerous. You only need to look at her. She's tiny. How can she be classed as a dangerous dog. I just want this whole nightmare to be over. I can't bear the thought of Lucy being put down. I don't know how I would break that to the kids. They love her. Um, the kids adore Lucy, and to be honest, they drag her all over the place. She's kind and gentle with them, and incredibly patient. I just can't emphasize how enough how tiny she is. Uh... Melanie said on October 9th, the day of the alleged attack, she was carrying shopping into her home at 3.45 p.m. while her children Lucy and Lucy ran in front of her. Next thing I know, our neighbor accuses Lucy of biting him on the ankle. She's never done anything like that before. A week later, the police knocked on Melanie's door to take a statement from her. Uh, when they saw how big Lucy was, how could you see in their, you could see in their faces, they thought, what are we doing here? I thought that would be the last of it, but then I got the court summons and I was absolutely petrified. It was awful. I'm not a criminal on the face of it. It is funny. I mean, a sausage dog, a dangerous dog. But then reality set in and I'm in court and the children could lose their best friend, Lucy, if Lucy is put down. I know the authorities are having to be careful at the moment because of all the news about dangerous dogs, but everybody I've spoken to about it find it hard to believe. Melanie now faces a trial later this year. But then I switch over to here about the band in Denver. And beyond the myth, everyone knows about pit bulls being de uh, banned in Denver. But here we go. Here is uh, Coco, the pit, and Desiree. Well, after her dog was put down, she decided to write a letter to Animal Control. And here's just a little excerpt of the letter. I can remember how I felt that day I came home on June 23, 2008. When I came home and saw the card in my screen door with the writing on the back, call us about your dog. I felt so empty because I knew the destiny for uh, my son. Denver Animal Control had taken Coco from the backyard while we were gone. The hardest thing for myself while Coco was on death row was going to visit him. He didn't understand what was going on. He thought we were there to take him home. It broke my heart every time. I thought he w he was in their three by five foot cell for nearly two months. They said they took him outside every day, but by the ways and by the way his nails looked, I doubt it. Every time I would leave, I could hear him cry and scream all the way to the door. He was so confused. Several workers there at the dog pound told me how he was such a good dog, so I would reply to that. How do you kill an innocent family dog? And they would always have the same response. It's just our job. One animal control employee even nicknamed Coco, Cocalicious. The last day Coco was alive, they had finally moved him to a double cell, which is just a metal slab in between two of the three by five foot cells so he could run back and forth through the two cells. I believe he knew what he was going to, what was going to happen to him within the short hours to come. Uh, he was very nervous. His eyes and nose were bright pink and I could not get him to calm down. 
Maybe he felt how sad and scared I was because I knew it was coming down to his final hours. I lay on the floor with him for about an hour. Then I said my final goodbye. That was the longest walk on the, out of the dog pound. I felt that I had let my son, my innocent son that has never hurt anything or anybody in his life, down. He never knew anything about violence. He was a spoiled brat that our, our entire family loved. The next day, when we picked up his remains, was even harder than the last walk. They had him in a black trash bag. About 20 to 25 of our family members were there, and we all held hands and said a prayer. Now he is at home with us in his urn on our front desk. He will remain in our hearts and thoughts forever. Desiree, I feel so sorry for you because I know how, especially how that is because uh, my pit bull Zeke is in his urn on our um, on our uh, family uh, entertainment system. He's on the top and uh, the girls, my girls, always ask pretty much every day to so we can take him down so they can kiss him and in his little box. So I know exactly how you got how you feel. But uh, I just wanted to share this story with all you guys because this lady over here is all is talking about how her sweet Lucy the Dachshund might be put to sleep because of a because she's an ankle biter. But here's a story about a pit bull that was just taken, no questions asked. So, uh, yeah, there it is.